Oh my god, you guys, if my phone falls down, it's because the little kitty is sitting right behind there and she is just, oh, there she goes. Okay, we're fine. Hey everyone, my name is Jessa Marie and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited that you all are back here watching with me today and I have some very exciting things that we're going to look at. And by exciting, I mean pull related stuff because you know, that's my life. But I'm gonna talk to you today about the basics that I feel are necessary to uh, bring to class just to be on the safe side to make sure that you have the best experience you possibly can in your class that you have signed up for, whether it be dance, tricks, floor work, combination, whatever, okay? So first thing is, I like to make sure that my pole bag is something that when I look at it, it makes me happy because I don't want to look at something boring and be like, oh God, I have to go to pole class and exercise. <laughs> no, that's not what we're doing, right? We're having fun. Pole, pole dancing is exciting and fun. So I want my bag to reflect that. I have a variety of different pole bags that I use. Obviously, y'all know that three of the things that I love are leopard print, the color purple, and glitter. So sparky. So this is one of my favorite pole bags. It's a very good size. As you can see, it is about as wide as my knees are. I am 5'2". You can fit everything you need and lunch in here, y'all. All right, so we start out with our glitter bag. It's fun, and this glitter, by the way, does not shed off. It's embedded into the bag. It's a little rough feeling, but it's still stick, sticked onto the bag itself. I like to have handles as well as a shoulder strap so that I have options depending on where I'm going, if I'm carrying multiple bags, because if you see me on my training days, that'll be a separate video, I look like I'm moving in. <laughs> I also am a big fan of the zip top closures in my pull bags because I'm rough. I'm a rough girl. I throw my shit around. So I need my bag to be sturdy enough to handle me. <laughs> so. The bag itself. Lots of nice lining on the inside to protect the bag so that it's secure and sturdy, keeping my stuff inside, but the bag itself will not be damaged. So what are we putting in our pull bags? That's probably what you are here to watch, right? You, I could talk for an hour about why I love this glittery sparkly bag, but you know. So first things first, the most important thing you want to put in your pole bag are clothes. Not normal people clothes, pole dancing clothes. Because there's nothing worse than getting to a tricks class and realizing you forgot shorts and a sports bra because it's gonna be very difficult for most tricks classes for you to be able to perform the necessary moves even if you're in the most basic of tricks classes because skin sticks. You need your skin to stick to the pole. So. I always pack bottoms and a top. I also like shiny things and I like to match. I like to be cute. It kind of makes me feel good and happy and gets me motivated to go work out. You know, not that pole doesn't motivate me to go work out anyway, but it's just like, you know, it's cute. It's fun. You know, and that's what pole dancing is. So basics, if, you're, if you bring nothing else with you, make sure you bring your shorts and your top. Now, personally, I'm a heels girl. You all know this because you see me dancing in heels, doing tricks in heels, everything in heels. So next thing I make sure I have are my heels. And I try really, really hard to make sure that my heels kind of match my outfit in some way or another, either it's a contrasting color or it's a monochromatic kind of look or if you want to match anything, you can just pack a pair of clear heels or like these, clear glitter heels. So, heels. 
Now, heels are not required in classes, at least they sh aren't in most dance studios classes. They're normally optional. I personally almost always wear heels, so you'll very rarely see me without heels because I just love being in them. They make me feel more confident, they make me feel more sexy, and I like the way they make me look, so I'm always wearing heels. Now, if you're not a heels person, you like dancing barefoot, or even if you are a heels person, the other thing I recommend packing are socks. I like to pack socks for two reasons. Uh, the first one is a lot of things that I teach specifically do involve sliding around uh, on your feet or platforms. So if you're not wearing platform heels where you can slide around on the floor, then you might have some difficulty because you're rubbing on the top of your feet or the side of your foot and we don't want to injure ourselves and rip off any skin that's unnecessary, you know? <laughs> so I'll pack a pair of socks just in case. Also, especially during the winter time, I get cold. So I, my comfort comes number one as far as how I look versus my comfort level. Comfort level up here, my physical appearance down here. I will look as ridiculous as possible if it may, means that I'm comfortable. So me wearing socks with my heels, absolutely gonna happen, you know? <laughs> or dancing barefoot with my socks until I get warmed up enough to put on heels, depending on how cold it is. So, moving on. Now this, these are not necessarily something that you need for tricks-based classes, but these are things I recommend bringing to your dance classes, definitely to floor work classes. And that is a pair of nice, good knee pads, sturdy, preferably ones that have a hole in the back so you can still do spins that involve a knee pit grip, like forward hook, backwards hook, that sort of thing. Knee pads. The other thing I recommend for dance classes or floor work classes are a pair of leg warmers. In the summertime in Florida, it gets really, really, really hot, so leg warmers are not something that uh -oh, you ne might necessarily need all the time. However, you will find that there are specific moves that will make things easier if you're wearing leg warmers. So things like sexy snail, sliding around on the floor, sexy crawling, lots of different things make Leg, warmer, leg warmers will make a little bit easier. Also, if it's in the fall, springtime, it's a little breezy or it's chilly outside, it'll help keep your legs warm while you can still look cute wearing your little skimpy bottoms and your little top without having to be fully clothed if that's not your jam. Other thing you need to bring, especially for tricks classes, uh, not so much for dance classes. Um, me personally, I like to, I don't like to advocate this for beginners, but your favorite grip aids. So my, I have a lot of different grip aids and I use a lot of different ones depending on what my specific needs are that day. But my top favorites always are dry hands and dew point. So this is the two ounce bottle of dry hands and this is the sample size of dew point. I like to keep the sample size in my bag that way in case the klutz that I am sits on it, steps on it, crushes it, I don't lose my whole big bottle of dew point. So I have my big bottle that I purchase and then I'm just constantly refilling my little sample bottle so that I don't make a mess of everything. Now, my favorite grip aids, more on these in a different video, you'll see. Last but not least, the number one thing to bring in with you in your pull bag or separate, you should probably actually carry this, is water. Pull is hot, pull is sweaty, we work out, we sweat a lot, especially if you're in Florida and especially if you're me because I am a sweaty bitch. I say that all the time, I'm such a sweaty bitch. I am the girl who is like standing ass up in front of the fan trying to cool things down <laughs> so that she can grip the pole. So I definitely, I'll go through an entire cup of water teaching in like two hours, you know. So. I personally like to have I personally like to have reusable cups because I'm really really big on recycling so I try to avoid bottled water whenever I can. 
So I like to have these reusable cups. This one is a steel one from Starbucks. It has a reusable straw as well and a reusable lid. It's not leak proof. So if you knock it over, it's going to, it might spill, but it is leak resistant. So this is completely full. This is a completely full, I just filled this up. See, it's sideways, I'm shaking it. No water's coming out. You have to really turn it upside down before it starts dripping. So it's a little leak resistant, which is helpful because, you know, your girl's klutzy, I trip, I kick, I do the things. So, did you all see Eleanor make a little appearance? That's little kitty. Hi, baby girl. Hi. This is my fluffy little girl, Eleanor. She's a sweetie. She is one year and three months old now. Oh, she likes to climb in my pole bag too, but uh, unfortunately she's not one of the things I would recommend bringing to the studio because you will trip over Kitty or kick her. <laughs> so that's it ladies and gentlemen, anybody non-binary. These are the basics that I like to make sure are in my pull bag. So if you have any questions, concerns, uh, additions, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear about them. If there's anything else that you bring in your pull bags, I'd love to hear about it. I pack a different pull bag for if I'm a student, if I'm teaching, if I'm going to a floor work class, or if I'm training for a competition. That's a whole big thing. That's when I look like I'm moving in. I have like three bags. It's like a whole thing. And then I have my, I'm a student, but I'm extra as fuck. <laughs> so if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Let me know. I hope to see you all again soon. Love you, babes.